All righty. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the last session of the QGIS Open Day. Um, and this session, Ethan is very kindly going to take us through a styling extravaganza. I'm very excited. Of course, cartography and styling being super close to my heart. Um, and of course, with all of us, um, some more than others and some in a bigger way than others contributing to the 30 day map challenge. Um, I thought it would be exciting at the end of um, the month to have at least one session that is all about styling, all about making beautiful maps and just taking us out of the everyday grind and making some artworks. Um, of course, Ethan is really great at making maps. He's going to show us a whole bunch of cool things. Um, hopefully, um, everyone can join in. If you would like to join in in the meeting, please feel free to join in. I am putting that into the live chat now. And um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. Over to you. Oh, hang on. I can't hear you. Yep. Yep. There we go. <laughs> um, so hello, everybody. Welcome to this uh, fun, huge styling extravaganza. Um, this is not uh, just a simple uh, lecture where I'm just going through and talking about all the cool stuff you can do in QGIS, but also hopefully uh, we get more people over here in Jitsi. Um, we can actually showcase some people's maps and styles for um, that they did for the uh, 30 day map challenge. And maybe have them walk through some of their fun styles that they made. So I'm going to share my screen and show some, some of the things we'll be going over today, at least on my side. Okay. So uh, for some of the maps that I made, uh, make sure everyone can see my screen. Yes. Yes, I okay. can see you. Perfect. So um, for modern events, I'm just going to start showing over this one, but it's not the one we're actually going to be starting with. Uh, some fun things we're going to be looking at in this map is we are looking at layer effects, uh, draw effects with this um, outer glow. We're going to look at blending modes with a fill gradient, um, actually adding images via URLs, uh, working with, uh, well, th these aren't arrows, these are actually markers, but um, slapping some text in here, and this vignette. Uh, we have- I see the vignette, that's cool. And then uh, looking at some special kind of shading, uh, looking at using the aspect tool to generate this shiny looking plasticky map. So we've got some fun stuff going on there. Uh, this one's one of my personal favorites. Uh, this is a CRT War Games-esque map from the classic 1980s film War Games. We got the CRT effect with these sharp, crisp lines with this uh, glow. And if I zoom in, we got this uh, scan line effect with layer blending modes. A lot of this is blending modes. Um, putting all this together, uh, we'll be talking about font choices, getting fonts, looking for fonts. Um, this one, uh, looking at it also more blending modes, looking at polygon contours. This is one of the ones I'm super interested in and in, in seeing. <laughs> I like polygon contours. Um, this one's just prior, pretty much opacity blending modes and choosing backgrounds. Um, and then that brings us back to this one. So. Let's dive right on into one that I unfortunately didn't have an export image for already. And that would be these fun little glass orbs. Um, so the, earlier before the stream, I was actually talking with Amy about um, the Oso oh wonderful company we all know and love oh so dearly, Esri. And <laughs> to their credit, um, do they have a lot of fun stylings of all the stuff that they can do in there. And because it's a, it's another platform, uh, GIS platform, um, Niall Dawson over at North Road has been busy making the Slayer plugin for taking Esri files and converting them to QGIS. So in order for things to come over, QGIS needs to actually add a lot of styling features in order to make it on par with Esri stuff for uh, being able to import symbology. So over in Esri land, there is a guy named John Nelson who 
obviously has way too much fun in his job and makes really fun styles for Arc Pro. So I was thinking to myself, how about I try and port these styles to QGIS? And this is one of those styles. Let me zoom in here so we can see. Uh, so he made these glass orbs, so I went and tried to copy the style as best as I could um, into QGIS. So we have these glass orbs over a um, terrain hill shade with um, an effect layer. I do have some layer blending on the raster here, so it makes it pop a little more. If I turn off the, uh, the little screen, it looks a little dingy. So to make it pop a little, I have another layer here, which is the same uh, country border here. So first we're going to look at making this, this base map for our glass orbs. So first, modern uh, QGIS versions now ship with over in the XYZ tile section, the MapZen Global Terrain. I'll slap this in here. So we get this nice DEM of the world. Slap this on the bottom. And one cool styling feature we have in QGIS is being able to take a DEM and directly render uh, Hillshade from it. So here we have our Hillshade. Um, looks a little flat over here compared mm -hmm. to other places. So I'm going to use the Z factor and kind of pop it out a little bit. So this is vertical exaggeration. So you see these um, these features here that were once fairly flat now stand out. So then I'm taking on top of that a imagery layer. For instance, this is just Google Satellite. And I now want to impose this or lay over this satellite onto this hill shape. So it looks like I'm actually looking at the topography with this aerial. So over in blending modes here for the satellite with the uh, hill shade on the bottom, we're going to change the uh, blending mode from normal to multiply and voila, we've now got some nice looking hill shade coming through our satellite imagery. Now we can change a couple things if we wanted. If I wanted to change the brightness a little because it's a little dark, we can do that here. Change the saturation. If we wanted something a little more uh, like backgroundy. There we go. Something like that if we wanted. We can change the contrast or lower it. However, I'm going to leave it uh, about there. So then for those of you who didn't know for the country border here, I just use the built-in QGIS Easter egg, which you can find by going into the coordinate box and just typing in world. It's our favorite Easter egg. <laughs> yes. And it loads up for you the world um, boundaries, or the country boundaries for the world. And it gives a nice base layer for our uh, playing around with this kind of stuff. So I just went and I found because of uh, the, the Google imagery, I wanted something that was landlocked because the satellite imagery for the oceans isn't that nice to look at. So for, the, for this particular map, I wanted something landlocked. So I went and I found way up here, this nice, wonderful landlocked country of, what country was this? Uh, Chisakia. <laughs> it's a nice landlocked country here. And so basically what I did is I found the FID for it, which is 374, filter, FID equals 374. Now all I have is this country border. And for this drop shadow, because I wanted this to pop 
pop up out of the map. So we have um, drawing effects uh, that we can add, which are here in the for uh, any layer. It'll have draw effects on the bottom. We're going to go into this panel. I'm going to disable the source, which is the uh, original symbology layer that is this. I, I don't need this. So I'm going to turn that off. So we have a couple fun things we can do here. We do have a regular drop shadow. However, with drop shadows, turn the source on for reference, mm -hmm. it has an offset mm. of um, in the X and Y direction using this. In fact, you can see a little preview here in this corner. You can see how the drop shadow is moving around, which is great if that's the kind of effect you want. But in this case, we want an all around glow. So I'm not going to use the drop shadow, but rather the outer glow. Now you can see we've got a feathered glow about the whole outside of the shape. So I want this to be dark. Oh, that, that's a drop shadow settings. There we go. That's better. Um, want this dark and we have the, <laughs> looks uh, like a cloud shadow <laughs> i guess it does <laughs> turn on the source we have a reference of where this is going so turning up the spread is the distance so i think that looks good and then the blur radius changes how it uh, how smooth it looks. Then you can change the opacity. If I change the opacity up really high. It's a it's a very stark, pure black edge, and then it uh, tapers off. This changes the overall opacity. So if you wanted to tone it down a little bit, I think that looks good. And turn off the source. No, that's not what I did. Oh, I used the shape burst fill. Oh, my bad. Well, here's one way we could do it. Um, another <laughs> way. <laughs> See, there's more than one way to do these kind of things. And there's so much fun things that you, you can do in here. Like, we got this outer glow. But it turns out that's not what I used. Okay, so instead of drawing effects, we're going to use another method. And... We're going to use the shape burst fill, which is really cool because it gives you a nice gradient within the shape, except we want it to go the other direction. We want it instead of inside the shape, we want it outside the shape. So there's a symbol type of inverted polygons, which flips it. So we are going to change these colors. So the, this top color is the start edge color, which we want as black. Uh, don't worry about this weird artifacting. This will go away after we're done finishing the settings. And the final color, and then the final color we want, we also want black, but we're going to change the opacity to zero. Because otherwise, it'll get brighter. It'll turn from black to white along with the opacity. So if we stick with the same color, it's just fading to pure transparent. So we want the whole shape. Uh, no, we want set distance. So set distance is where we can set the distance from the edge to where it's fully opaque. Um, by default, it sets to 5 millimeters. We can change this to whatever we want. Map units, which in this case is meters. We're adding a bunch of zeros. There we go. And here we are. So now we have this nice drop shadow effect with this country. It looks like it's just popping straight out of the map. And to smooth. I see Victoria right. in the questions asks, what is the URL for the Google XYZ tile? Um, ah, yes. Uh, the Google XYZ tile, um, let's see. 
I will post this in the chat. Let's see here. There you go. And Brilliant. thanks. Yep, no problem. I'm going to turn up the blur strength and it'll make it uh, much more smoother. Um, it, it is hard to see here, but there is a lot of weird artifacts that you get with the, uh, especially around sharp edges. So turning up this blur strength will smooth it out. So now we have our drop shadow. So now I want this country to pop out of the map, not just with this drop shadow, but also to make it stand out more the, um, the the aerial satellite imagery color i want it to, to actually be different than the base but i don't want it to be weird it, if you know what i'm i'm referring to or what, what i mean by that so i have i duplicated the world map layer that i had and i have this screen layer that i have and which is just a simple fill of a color except this is a very particular color. This is actually the black body color for standard daylight. So for those who do not know, there is the black body scale for the color of lights. Like for instance, if you went shopping for light bulbs and you'll see like cool white, warm white, daylight, what are those referring to? Those are referring to temperatures on the uh, Kelvin scale with um, daylight being 5,600 Kelvin. So I'm just gonna go over to one of my favorite sites for this kind of stuff, Wolfram Alpha. If I type in the uh, degree in Kelvin, 5,600 K. And it is a black body color. So we actually get a perceived color here. This is what it looks like. If I can click on that, it'll give me the RGB hue, saturation, value, and colors for daylight. So I go in and put that in to the color, and I uh, turn down the opacity. And now it looks brighter without really altering the color too much of the satellite. So now we have this nice-looking base map of this landlocked country popped out. And now it's time for the fun stuff. The glassy orbs. <laughs> there is a lot going on here with these glass orbs. There's a lot of layers here. So I'm going to zoom in a lot using the magnifier so we can look at these in wonderful detail. I'm going to turn these backdrop layers off. Oh, I'm sorry. I almost forgot one of one a uh, very important thing with the uh, screen layer, and that is the actual blending mode to get it to blend nice. I have. Let's see. Do I have it actually set layer rendering? Yeah. So for the overall feature layer under the top layer for the symbology, under the layer rendering tab, I have the blending mode set to overlay. If I switch it to normal, doesn't really blend that well, even with the opacity. So just going through various uh, layer blending modes. Screen, dodge, addition, mm -hmm. darken. I uh, didn't seem to do anything. Multiply, yeah, because I want something that's going to make it brighter. That's definitely an interesting color, but not what I'm looking for. Overlay. Oh, well, there we are. Mm -hmm. So it brightens it up nicely. We have soft light. That looks a little dingy. Hard light. Almost the same as normal. Difference. This one will really change the color of things. And subtract. So overlay is the one I want. 
And there we go. Now we can get over to our glass orbs. Oh, wow, time is flying fast. <laughs> okay. So we have uh, a new feature. Uh, these are actually points. Uh, we have a relatively new symbology feature type for uh, points, which is filled marker. Hmm. This basically allows you to take one of the standard point symbols, but gives you a polygon fill style that you can use with it. So that's what all, all of these are. Uh, for, uh, for the most part, these are all gradients, radial gradients. Other than this one, this one's the only linear one. Um, this bottom one on the bottom, the shapers fill, this is the little shadow that makes it look like light is reflecting through. So that this is all hack stuff, obviously. There's no real glass shader or anything in QGIS. So we're just faking it using gradients. I can turn off that drop shadow. So to start with, uh, I basically just followed John Nelson's guide for these and just converted the symbology manually, looking at his guide, looking at the colors, and copying them. Um, so he started with a linear gradient with a color ramp of this, except with, in Esri world, the color ramps are actually backwards. So this blue color here on, in Esri world is actually on this side. So in QGIS, we have to flip the color ramp. And a new feature, thanks to Nile, is being able to set the direction for hue saturation value interpolation, or hue saturation lightness as well. And we got clockwise or counterclockwise. And the reason why we have these options is because with hue saturation value, the hue value is a value in degrees between 0 to 360, with 0 and 360 equaling red. And the colors in between are the various degrees along the hue wheel, which is the most common way to represent it. So in order to get from point A to point B, you can either go clockwise or counterclockwise to get there. So you have these options of whether you want to go the long route or the short route. <laughs> And doing so, you can actually create this little rainbow effect by going the opposite direction, or the longest path. In this case, I want clockwise. I want the shortest path. Mm -hmm. So this one's clockwise, and this one's actually counterclockwise for the shortest path. If I wanted this interesting rainbow effect, I can go the other way. So the other way is kind of going through the full array of colors before getting to that point, whereas the other one's just kind of like shortcutting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's either going, let's just say we had uh, our source colors here and our destination colors here. Uh, one way is going the shortest distance, which mm -hmm. is usually the color we, we'd want, the gradient we'd want to go through. The other would be going this long way, going through the purples, the reds, the orange, yellow, green, all the way around till we hit the teal color. Cool. So this, uh, for this gradient, we have linear. Set it to centroid. Moving these reference points around. So we get the, um, it oriented the way we want. No offsets here. Uh, then a radial uh, gradient for this layer, setting this to the center, reference point for the center. And a lot of points here, varying degrees in opacity. Another radial layer. This one puts a little spot. Now, the offset here is a little interesting. Moving these reference points is a little tricky. Because changing these values do different things. Like as you can see, as I'm changing this number, the radius here looks like it's changing the more I change the number. Now it's getting smaller. Now it's getting larger again. So it's a lot of back and forth with these two numbers to try and figure out how to get it where you want it. And then to make things even more complicated, there's this rotation. 
which rotates things. There we go. So this is a lot of playing around with these settings, trying to get it to pop up where you want it. This is a similar thing here. And I'm just building up these layers until we get this final result. And then for that fake see-through effect, just add a little shape burst fill to it with a simple gradient or color ramp gradient. The colors I want for the center, the edge, and then all feathered out the full opacity. And then we get this thing. So turning on now all my layers. This is what we get. That is brilliant. We should have called this video how to use as many symbol layers as possible. <laughs> <laughs> but that's amazing. I, I, I've been, as soon as I saw the bubble sort of shape, I envisioned making ones that kind of looked like planets. So I'm keen to go offline and try that out. <laughs> Sure, have fun, and then uh, post your results. We'd love to see what uh, what you can come up with. The rings are on Saturn. Oh, my brain started working. No, 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 this is bad. I have other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to jump to now a other project, uh, another one of the maps that has a lot of fun stuff I do want to go over. Um. That'd be this one. The lines. So this is that 80s CRT effect. Again, this was also a style that John Nelson over at Esri made for Arc Pro that I converted and ported over. Sorry, to I Jesus. got totally sucked into that uh, that presentation and forgot like to do my job. Um, Raymond is commenting on the live chat saying that this is so cool. Anita Grasa <laughs> has also said that this is very exciting and people are really keen and watching the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the, this is definitely really cool stuff. In fact, it, it is a shame that John Nelson works for Esri. I think you'd have a lot <laughs> of fun with Fugis. <laughs> um, so oh, over here, uh, being this as lines, I need. Oh, I, I thought this 80s style was really cool, these sharp lines with the CRT effect from that uh, 1980s movie War Games where you had this giant like military room with all the top brass. They're looking at these massive CRT screens, these CRT vector screens. So you have all these sharp, crisp lines with these points, and they're showing like where planes are, ships are, all this fun stuff. And it has this really cool aesthetic to it. Nice retro aesthetic. So over in Esri Land, he had to do some faking of stuff because Unfortunately, over there, he doesn't have stuff like drop shadows and outer glows, which we do. So I was able to do things the right way. <laughs> so to, just a quick little overview. I'm just going to look through one of these because these are pretty much all stylized exactly the same. So I'm just going to look at these, these point layer, this point layer in particular. So this point layer is zoom in so we can see this in nice glorious detail so that this is just a simple uh simple marker i have a triangle then i have some circles so over in this one i have set to the stroke color that this is the bottom most layer so this is the red the red glow Oh, this is the triangle base, base layer. And this one's got an outer glow, a gradient, a, a, a color ramp from red to also red. This first stop is the same color as the first, except with the opacity to zero for the same reason I mentioned earlier. If I, if I were to just make this pure white, the gradient wouldn't come out quite the way we'd want it to. So this is the exact same color. In fact, this is literally pure red because this is, you know, 80s CRT. So these bright burn your eyeballs out colors. So we have this outer glow with still the source layer to fill in. 
because uh, so with, with the way CRTs work, you have this bright, very bright color. So we have this white color band right here that is representing where the actual um, ray beam is hitting. And then we slowly have the colors that are what you actually perceive from the CRT. Because believe it or not, CRTs are far brighter screens than what we presently have in LCD and LED screens, the more you know. So then I have a circle with pretty much the same thing. I've got a glow, outer glow of the color. I've got a solid fill of that color and then an upper white rim. But at a distance, you don't quite really see that white. You see the red, and that's the point. So that's that's this this effect. So now I want to look over at the layouts because there's some also further neat stuff going on over here. Oh, you know, let me turn on my layers again. Okay. A couple things here. One, I did set the background of the the map canvas to black. So the background is pure black for everything to nice pop out against. And the fonts are a huge choice here because I wanted a font because fonts mean a lot. Um, I wanted a font that had very thin lines and had that, um, that straight jagged look to look like, a, uh, well, it had to be a monospace font. Um, and I wanted it to be nice thin lines so I could have this nice glow around it for that same effect that I did for the points. And the streams, boundaries, and stuff are all that same style. So after scrolling through a ton of fonts, I ended up finding this font. And of course, naturally, this font had to be from Autodesk uh, that came with AutoCAD. But just going around trying to find fonts that go with the style you're looking for. I know I had a couple that I liked. This ended up being the one I chose, but browse around, try and find some fonts that uh, that match the style that you're looking for because it can make or break your style. So I have a rectangle here for this box. The text itself is not part of the box because I needed the rectangle to have special effects that I couldn't do as a background for the text. So this is a regular rectangle with a fill and the, the outline also has that same effect as the other layers. So you got this nice black box. It's also blocking background stuff like these, these extraneous waterways that are, um, in the way so this black box also serves as a mask to mask away the stuff that is not relevant i also offset the edge of this line here so we have this gap so this nice little border here so it, these aren't touching overlapping and looking messy come on load okay and finally, for go back to the pictures. Um, one thing that this has also is these have a scan line across. Nice scan line effect. So what this is, this is a rectangle that covers the entire the entire layout. It's over top of the whole thing. And we go over to the rendering tab. So this, this is being overlaid against the whole layout. Now, just a note about layer blending modes. When you go to do your export and uh, your map exporting, and if your map contains blending modes, PDFs do not support blending modes. So your output will be rasterized. So your entire map layout, instead of being these nice crisp lines of vector, 
um, it will be reduced to uh, a raster. So I'm, so I'm going to change this to normal real quick so we can see what I have. So for the style of this polygon, I have a line pattern fill, just a basic line of a light gray, really fine lines. And I hope this is coming over well on the live stream. <laughs> YouTube is probably hating us right now. <laughs> um, so I have these really fine lines, and these are going to be representing the scan lines. So you're not going to see these when they're overlaid against the direct back black background but you'll see this shmiri streak effect on everything else so going out of those maybe to go on a load come on there we go switching this to overlay now, another thing, you might not actually see the effect properly in the layout. Like, for instance, I, I don't see anything. But when you actually export your layout, you will see the effect applied. And this is what that effect is. So does anyone have any questions over this? this map i don't see any questions i do just see a bunch of comments people liking and i do see some comments of people helping each other just find the different um tiles xyz tiles available so thanks yeah. for those comments okay let's see Okay, I guess since uh, Amy requested this one, uh, we'll look at Yay. this one. This one's also got more layer <laughs> blending modes and contour polygons. This one is my day three. Going to exit out of this. Maybe. No, no whatever. No, no changes. I want safe anyways. Okay. Polygons, here we are. Raymond asks, how did you come up with the marble design? So, um, let's see. I did not. It's actually courtesy of this guy over in Esri. Uh, John Nelson works for Esri. He has way too much fun making really fun styles and you can check out his blog. And what I have what I was trying to do for this month's 30-day um, map challenge was take his styles that he made for Arc Pro, uh, which is an Esri product, proprietary, paid, and make them or copy them in QGIS. So all of the styles that I'm showing you are stuff that John Nelson has actually made originally. So he's got a ton of stuff. Here's that 80s War Room maps, War Games, that we saw. Um, and scrolling through here, eventually I will find the glass orbs that's floating around here somewhere. This guy makes a lot of fun stuff, so he's got 33 pages. <laughs> do, 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 do. Any day now. Uh, it's somewhere. Should be coming on it soon. Didn't think it was this far back. I really should have bookmarked this. Here it is. So I also love the title he puts on these. Steal this glassy or point style, please. To which I then reply, well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> so the one that we saw is this one. I still have to go through and make the rest. So when I make the rest of these, I will then be uploading them to the QGIS Style Hub, which um, sales pitch here. For those of you who do not know, there is the QGIS Style Hub, where you can find all these wonderful, marvelous styles that people have previously made that you can import into QGIS and use in your maps. We've got some really fun stuff. 
a lot of fun stuff using geometry generator from Klaus is usually in here. Like we got the orienteering course style set that he had a video over. Uh, we've got a variety of things from single styles. In this case, we have shoe prints to a whole suite of styles like this one. Hexagon, coastline shadings, violin, elevation lines, whole bunch of fun stuff. We even have a Pokemon first gen color palette set. <laughs> And we even have some really awesome call outlines from Anita. I really like using these in the rare occasions I actually do to get to use them. We've got stuff, color ramp. You can filter by color ramps, fills, lines, legend patches. And if you didn't know legend patches were a thing, yes, they are. You can get these awesome legend patches. So you can have fun little uh, symbols in your legends versus the plain boring points uh standard straight line or standard box for your fills you can change them i usually use the contours one for contours all the time i use this one for water bodies and one of these two for streams all the time in all my maps and included in this style hub we also have stuff for projects you can upload projects of some really fun stuff you've got blended lines from tim sutton Klaus had some stuff with military grids and other fun stuff Models. These are QGIS processing models. Some really neat stuff in here. We've got stuff about uh, directional network stuff. Catchment delineation from Hans. Uh, a bunch of other various fun stuff here. 3D models for random 3D stuff for all your 3D maps. And last but not least, QGIS layer definition files for vector tiles. So that is the QGIS style hub. In case you did not know, I will actually post a link to this in the live chat for those who didn't know. This is here for everyone to use. And please contribute to. Yes, please. Please also do contribute to it or uh, contribute to it. And uh, actually, one of my style sets that I totally didn't steal from John Nelson is also on here. Uh, oh, shout out to these awesome Tanaka contours. Tanaka contours are really awesome. Here we are. Here is the uh, Firefly style that John Nelson made for Arc Pro uh, ported to QGIS. We have lines, points, polygons, and stuff with internal hatches, as well as two color ramps. One that loops all the way around and one that does not. And, yeah, still this Firefly style, please. Well, don't mind if I do, and I did. So there it is, free for everyone to use. Okay, end of shameless plug. <laughs> Okay, so over to this map. So we have contour polygons. These are not lines. Let me turn this off for now. And simple fill. We'll turn this off. Okay. Change this color to something different for now. Okay. So if you start with a DEM like this. And one would normally go to a contours, and this will generate lines. However, there's another option right down here, right below it, called contour polygons. And instead of making lines, this will actually make area polygons for your contours. Now, granted, this is a hefty process and takes much longer than generating normal line contours. This does not just join or make closed polygons based off the line uh, line contours at all. In fact, if I show you what these actually look like, this is just a solid fill of polygons. And the whole boundary is the boundary of that elevation set. So it's not like it's fully enveloped to all the stuff below it that I wouldn't see if you're stacking. So you can stack these in either order and nothing will be covering the other. So that's why it's so expensive in terms of time and processing. 
So taking these, and because they don't overlap each other, we can go over here and draw effects. And we're actually gonna use a drop shadow this time. And poof, now we have stacking contour polygons. I think I made these at, I think 10 foot intervals. I don't remember <laughs> what I ran this against. Um, but uh, the, the intervals, the height intervals depends on your area, what you're looking for. Um, if it's a relatively flat area, one, one foot or one meter, depending on your area, might work. These are, I do believe, 10 foot. I can check if I really wanted to, but it doesn't matter. So basically, I just have a drop shadow effect here to make it look like that they're stacked. And another important thing to note with contour polygons is the layer rendering order. So we need to check this control rend uh, control feature rendering order under the layer rendering tab. And we're going to order it by or sort it by the elevation. Now, what, whether you choose the elevation min or the elevation max doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to flip it to show you that it still works if it's flipped. So here we have our inverted polygon contours. Looks like you're looking at it from the beneath. <laughs> you know, if you could just flip it over and look inside the hill. <laughs> So there was a couple other things that I was wanting to do. Like I was wanting to copy his uh, uh, John's uh, paper cut style where he had these looking like um, sheets of paper. Let me turn this back to white. So one of the things I have is I have a image master here. Okay. Hide that. Enable the symbol layer. Okay. So now, so now I have this image being rendered underneath. I need to be able to see it through. So going back into draw effects. Oh, damn it. Drop shadow has to be later. <laughs> so here we are. So I have the drop shadow effect also on this because I was playing around with various methods and ways of doing things. So now I can colorize this if I want. I can go to this simple fill layer and I can change the color. Let's change it to green for QGIS. Voila. Or better yet. You can leave, turn this layer off. Instead of using the polygon to fill it, we can actually use the DEM to color it. So changing the, uh, the rendering here to single band pseudo color choosing a particular color ramp we want. And here we are. So now, this, so now we can do whatever color ramp we want overlaying onto this texture, which gives you this effect. You zoom in here. There we go. But what I ended up doing was making that white, disabling this, going back to here, re-enabling the drop shadow. 
and adding the paper effect, not from the map. Oh, man, did I miss something? Ooh, yeah, that's a cool effect, but definitely not what I'm going after. There we go. But rather doing the texturing in the layout. If I go into the layouts, I have that paper texture in the background here. And I have a scripty handwritten-esque font. I think this one's actually papyrus. Some people love it, some people hate it. But it works in this application. I even have the legend here. How can a font be so polarizing? <laughs> it's a font. Some people uh, some people like it, some people hate it. I guess it, it's like one of those that could be like overused. People use it for everything, and therefore it just becomes a font that people don't like. So for those who didn't know, the for the various different items you can add into your layout, they have a rendering tab, and you can change their blending modes. So I changed it to multiply, so it takes this legend and multiplies it against this rectangle background I have with this image fill. And unfortunately, this map will take a while to render out. But end of the day, it looks like this. So we have that paper texture. Let me switch over to the 300 DPI version. Mm -hmm. Yep, never mind. I couldn't export a... Oh, oh there it is. 300. Okay. So this was the final product. Um, on the live chat, oh, that name, uh, Juk 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 Juk, um, says that's awesome. <laughs> JK, 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 JK. Let's see. Um, there were several other things I wanted to get to, but uh, but we are pretty much no, out We are of running time. low on time. <laughs> uh, You'll just have to come back next month. I guess. So, <laughs> um, let's see. So I, I guess at this point, does anyone have any questions or anything they want to see? Um, any, any, does anyone have any maps they want to quickly show in the remaining time we have? Anyone do anything Anyone in the fun? room? I suppose in the in the last five minutes. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely went way faster than I had anticipated. There was a lot I wanted to get to, like I wanted to get into uh, parameter SVGs, um, stuff like that. Uh, I did want to look at the uh, the Ukraine map, just looking at how I did the gradient for that overlay and then looking at the uh, web URLs for images, but so much to talk about. <laughs> well, you know what? Let's let's schedule a, a session for next month. Um, next month Jigmi, um, would love to see more of your artwork next time. So I think I think it's worth scheduling a session. I guess. Maybe not Brilliant next month. Stuff. It'll probably have to be January. But um, <laughs> Part two to be continued. Awesome. But, uh, All right. Definitely um, a no shout else... out. I definitely do want to yeah, give a shout out though, to uh, to uh, Niall Dawson, who's done a tremendous amount of work in the QGIS uh, rendering and symbology area. Um, not only with his plugin with uh, Slayer of the uh, commercial support stuff that's coming through that, but also other stuff that he's been adding. Um, a lot of this stuff, some of these styles actually couldn't have been possible without his work. So definitely a big shout out to Niall Dawson. For that, for all his work that he's put into symbology. Brilliant, thanks. And um, for anyone who's watching, Nal Dawson does have his own YouTube channel, so hop over there. There are some absolutely amazing tutorials and workshops to have a, a look at. Um, yeah. So it just remains for me to thank everybody who was here, everyone who's in the room, 
And please um, carry on watching the last few days of the 30 day map challenge and do um, submit some maps. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who um, joined us for the full open day. This was a fantastic one with lots of sessions. So I was really pleased that everyone could join us um, and all the best until next month. Thank you everyone, bye. Awesome job, Ethan, thanks. Alrighty, we are no longer live. Thanks, Ethan, that was awesome.